Greetings and peace. I hope you and yours are doing well today, wherever you might be watching this from. Now, the title of today's presentation will be The Brotherhood Between Knights Templars and Sufi Islam, and that common brotherhood between Christians and Muslims in general. Uh, a lot of people have this misconception of the, uh, the Knights Templars, saying that only Christians can become Templars, or only Muslims can become Sufis. And in my quest to unite humanity, I would see that oneness in God in all of the paths that I have talked about in my videos. Every path is teaching you the same exact thing on how to be better, think better, know better, and how to get closer to the divine within your own heart where you will find that divinity. So I was requested um, by a brother of mine who is a, a Christian and I'm a Sufi Muslim, but that bond of Freemasonry unites us. So he had raised this uh, question with me, so I, I wanted to dedicate this video to him and all those who have pondered on the same thoughts. So thank you for joining me and I hope you enjoy. Those that are wondering if a Christian can join Sufism or if a Sufi Muslim can become a Knights Templar, and the answer to that is yes you can. Holy Quran Surah 2 verse 62 clearly states, those who are Jews, Christians, and do right by God, they shall have no grief. Also, a treaty of Acre, 1229 AD, which permits peace between Templars and Muslims to defend all faiths. Saladin himself was knighted as a Templar. The enemies of Christ, that you know, a lot of the people who follow the Templar path have a misconception that you know anybody that's in, in the Holy Land or anybody that's a standing in the way of Christians is the enemy of Christ. They are just basically unbelievers how you know the enemies of Christ is described just like how a Muslim views infidel. These both refer to an atheist who does not believe in a supreme being and not one who is a believer. One of the 99 names of Allah which is God in Arabic is Allah Had. And the meaning of Allahad means one, that all is one. So we all come from that same source and from that light of Nur Muhammad, peace be upon him. Now a lot of people have a misconception that the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, was a just a mortal man who came and he lived and he died. So in Sufism we believe that when God created the before God created the world, he created the light of what, what is known as Nur Muhammad, peace be upon him. And from that light, all creation was made. So we all come from that same light and that same source. We must have that love and unity with each other. As long as you believe in God and do right by others, you can become a Sufi. This is my interpretation. There are orders like the Inayati order, which you can join that has Christians. Others require you to become a Muslim first. The definition of a Muslim is one who submits to God, and that's basically anyone that believes in a supreme being and follows their uh, volumes of sacred law and their conducts the way that it should. So the Sufis at the time of the Prophet were known as the people of the bench, mystics who were uh, given the introduction to the mystic side of Islam that the average profane would not. Just like how you have the initiate and you have the profane in, um, in Freemasonry. A Sufi believes in the oneness of all beings with his beloved, which is God. One of the names of Allah, God, being Allah Had, which means all is one. Holy Quran, Surah 2, verse 62, and Surah 49, verse 10, tell you that whether you are Jewish, Christian, or Muslim, the believers are but one brotherhood in obedience to the will of God. For us, Islam is ancient and revealed in stages, just like how masonry is. The first degree for us is the Torah, the second degree is the Holy Bible, and the third degree is the Holy Quran. We regard all volumes of sacred laws with the same respect, as Allah says in the third degree, Holy Quran, Surah 5, verse 3, that I have perfected your religion. So this religion of what we know as Islam has existed since the ancient Egyptian times. It's been continuation of one path to another. So for us, it's not like by me saying that the third degrees the Quran means that, that it's better than the Bible. 
all are given the same equal regard. Just like how you go to a Masonic Lodge and on the altar you will see all of the books laid at the same time. That doesn't mean one is lesser than the other. It's equal love and respect and reverence to all of the volumes of the sacred law. So to answer the question of that brother who asked if a Christian could join Sufism, we are all the same. As a child when I came to America, I studied in Bible school and Quran classes on the same day because I knew in my heart we are one brotherhood. That's something I had in my heart ever since I was a child. I learned the same with the Treaty of Acre and the peace between the Templars and the Sufi Muslims. They studied in the lodges together during the Crusades. If you look at the Arabic numbers 787, that's the square and the compass. And 787, if you look at the Kabbalah, Gematria, numerical value of the word Freemasonry, it comes up to 787. And for a Muslim, if you write 786 or 787, that's the equivalent of saying Bismillah Rahman Rahim, in the name of Allah, God, the Beneficent, and the Most Merciful. So you see, it's all about God, it's all about love, and, you know, the Templars studying with the Sufi Muslims with the 787 square and compass written outside of their lodges, Bismillah Rahman Rahim, strengthened their own knowledge as they brought that knowledge from the East and took it to the West, and that's what helped them strengthen their own foundations on what they would become in the future and that's that's what it's that's what it's about it's a universal teaching brotherhood if you believe in god have good character and do right by all then you are a sufi and that sounds familiar to those that are on the on the path it's not about any difference of any kind and i know we should avoid discussing religion but you know, I hope I answered the question of that brother, including all of these different videos that I did of similarity of masonry with all these paths, to show the oneness of it all. That's that's what it's really about. I mean, there are many Sufi orders where you can join as a Christian and many Templar orders where a Muslim can join. We all promise to defend each other for the sake of God. And all are equal because all, all three religions, whether it's Judaism or Christianity or Islam, are all the word of God. And that's, that's what it's about. We should carry that in our hearts. And as you see the rest of my presentation, I will try to put it all together so it makes better sense for those who are trying to understand this. As I explained before of the Templars and the Sufis studying together, we have to look at the etymology of the word Sufi. So suf comes from wool, which is with the traditional garments of the holy people and the saints and prophets in the Near East of that time. And this term has also been connected to purity, safwa, those that are chosen. And it's basically the dimension, your internal dimension of purifying your heart and how the divinity chooses the ones that are given the task to carry this responsibility. Now, you look, you look at the hat of the Knights Templar, no matter what jurisdiction that they are in, they all have the wool on top of their head, which signifies they might have their own significance that they might describe in modern terms, but it goes back to the time of the Sufis, the brethren of the white cloth, just like how in the Mecca, when all of the brethren gather on the level, to become the perfect ashlar, they all wear the white wool cloth, the ihram. So the Knights Templar is also has the wool on top of it to signify his connection with the Sufis. And how even whether it's the Assassins or the Templars or the Sufis or the Templars, whatever have you, they all wear the white and red. Because that's that significance of that purity and being Safwa. And just like you have in the Middle East, the Ikhwan al-Safa, the Brethren of Purity. It's that um, in internal realization that I'm on the path to purity. And while Islam was being revealed, there were people known as the people of the bench. And they were the ones that were always be inducted into mystical knowledge by the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him as he would sit and share that brotherhood with them and share that you know divinity with them just like how a mason 
we just er everyone sits and has fellowship and tries to learn from each other it's not about who's better than who or whose ideals are better it's about being equal and it's that concept of tasawwuf tasawwuf if tasawwuf if basically in your life the harder the better and when you are faced with trials and tribulations that is that tasawwuf making you a stronger sufi making you a stronger mason making you a you know stronger templar so we have these similarities all lined up to, that teach us that we are all one and the same and how we have all these associations with each other and it's about basically knowing that this life that we're in just like how the Sufi practices that this life you're basically a fakir you, you come with nothing you leave with nothing except the good actions that you had in your heart for yourself and others around you same with the you know with the masons it's about your heart it's not about you know how rich you are or what kind of money you have so that link we share but between each other with the sufis and the templars it's all one and the same and you can see with the 787 lodges they used to study in with the square and the compass plus the wool hats it's we're all on the path to purity and my hope is that through my videos or my dialogue those who make the memes about Templars, especially when it's hatred against Muslims being pushed, are taking the name of the Templars in vain too, because their goal was not to harm Islam or not to harm Muslims, for those who made the effort to understand what the, what the whole thing is about. These are the Arabic numbers from 0 to 9, and as you see with the numbers 787, that's the Masonic Square and Compass. And if you do the Gematria, Kabbalah calculation of the word Freemasonry, it comes up to the numbers 787 exactly. And 787 is the square in the compass, and in the numerical value of that is equivalent to Bismillah Rahman Rahim, which is in the name of Allah, the Beneficent, the Merciful. So it's all about God, for God, and by God. That's what the Masonic path is. That's what the Sufi and Templar path is. And that's 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 what was written outside of their lodges, when a lot of these uh, Sufi orders were instructing the Knights Templar by honing their esoteric knowledge with what they had studied and um, found in King Solomon's temple at that time during the Crusades under Al Aqsa Mosque. So I wanted to make sure that I had this out there too in this video. Most people do not know that Saladin and Richard the Lionheart were basically brothers of the same esoteric path. And anytime Saladin was in danger, or anytime Richard was in danger, or anytime that they could meet on the level or help each other in any way, they chose to. Just like how in the American Civil War or the World Wars, you had brethren from both sides that were in conflict with each other. But when they, when they realized who, each, who they were, then they were able to meet on a level and to spare each other's lives and help them and their cause whenever they could. So that's the same relationship we have Saladin and Richard the Lionheart, where Saladin himself protected the Christians in Jerusalem and allowed them safe passage in and out when needed and protected their churches and their relics, which is also what the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, has instructed in the charter that he gave to the monks in, uh, in Mount Sinai that a, Christ that a Muslim is always supposed to defend Christians whenever he can. So the definition of a Templar is one who defends the Christian faith. And what Islam teaches us with you know the verses in the Holy Quran, Surah 2, verse 62, and the charter of that that the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, had given to the monks in St. Catherine Monastery in Mount Sinai, plus the Treaty of Acre of 1229, that the Arabian chivalry and the cooperation between the Western chivalry, the Knights Templar, is to defend all faiths. And it's the Templars were never against Islam. We are an exception of this brotherhood where Saladin himself was given a knighting ceremony near Alexandria and that is exemplified 
in a lot of the Scottish Rite teachings as well for those who have participated in them. So these two brothers always taught us the values of being noble and to stand up was stand up to what was right. So this, the Treaty of Acre and what I described with the Temple Rule of 1129 AD. So the enemies were those that wanted to basically destroy not just, you know, the Christian religion, but any religion that believed in God. So the Templars were there to defend everyone. And that's why over time they were seen as a threat by the powers that be because they wanted to bring that unity between the human races. And that's what we see exemplified even in the, uh, I guess, the fictional, fictionalized interpretation of the Assassin's Creed video games where you have um, the Assassins, which come from an Islamic origin, and then you have the Templars, which come from the Christian origin. And both of them seek the same thing, peace, justice, and liberty, and order. But everyone has their own ways of achieving it. So we, we are not different from each other in any way, shape, or form. And it's that Sufi mystical Gnosticism and our aspect of helping each other with even the, the Al-Bana order of Sufis, which taught the Templars for all those years in the 787 lodges. And they had told the, the, the Knights Templars that you may have the cross, but we have the meaning for it. And over time, even the, the Assassin Brotherhood, the Hashashin, and their ascended master known as Rashid bin Al-Sinan, who is also known as Al Mu'allim, the old man of the mountain in the first Assassin's Creed video game. They themselves contributed to the infrastructure and the institutional organization of the Knights Templar as a sh as an order of chivalry. So us helping each other and building each other up is something that's that's not new or something that takes place in the 20th century. This has been going on for a while and we must find that aspect of meeting with each other in a, in a place where we know that you and I stand for the same thing because anything that causes disunity is ungodly and we must we must realize that here we have uh, the degrees of the Scottish Rite the two that I point wanted to point out is on the left hand side the 29th degree which is the Knight of St. Andrew and on the right hand side you have the 17th degree which is the Knight of the East and the West now the left hand side you see you have the knight, you have the Templar Christian cross, and you have the uh, green Islamic background. This shows that the balance of the brotherhood and peace we share with one another and tolerance without getting too much into these um, teachings. So on the right hand side you have the concept of the East and the West. Now the concept of the East and the West is that you must be able to learn knowledge from all fields just like how the Templars studied went to the East and studied and brought that light from the East back to the West and a lot of what I've seen what I've seen in um, Masonic uh, research and education for these past so many years which inspired me to make my own YouTube channel is that <clears throat> most people tend to have a certain background that they just want to focus on so a lot of people they just want to focus on the Greeks and Romans and they don't want to talk about nothing else not knowing that this knowledge of Masonic teachings and what Masonry is has been practiced by the Eastern paths and religions and philosophies for thousands upon thousands of years in the East and all that knowledge has already been there as you have seen me describe with the different paths that are there so we must not have a bias not just for a Western mindset, but be able to learn and apply from all of it, just like how the Templars did in their journey in the Holy Land. We must be able to learn from all different sources to become better, know better, and think better. That's, there's a reason why you are a knight of both East and West, just like how the Scottish Rite double-headed eagle looks in both directions. It's that duality. If you just look in one direction, that won't make you whole. You have to encompass that 360 degree circle and be able to learn from all paths. Where even Manly Palmer Hall has said that the true Mason is not creed bound. 
He learns from everywhere. He finds those lights from everywhere that he can to apply those lessons to his life. So <clears throat> without describing this, these degrees too much to, and, you know, a general uh, public uh, synopsis of it, I hope you were able to understand it. Here we have the Scottish Rite double-headed eagle looking in both directions to find meaning and to find that duality and that aspect within your heart and self knowing that love and light and knowledge can be found in all directions which adds to my previous slide we must be able to learn that knowledge and hone that duality within us just like how this symbol originates from the Phoenicians in the Middle East who are now the modern day Lebanese and how we see the symbol portrayed in all different nations and cultures that have used this symbol to show that aspect of divinity and oneness can be found within you. Just like how the Holy Bible, the book of Luke, tells you that the kingdom of heaven is within. And the Holy Quran, Surah 50, tells you that God is closer to you than your jugular vein. So in order to find God and in order to become a better Mason, you must look within your heart. That's where you will find everything. And in order to do that, first you must own that aspect of duality, east and west, just like how they're looking, and be able to become whole in that knowledge and understanding of your path. To better understand humanity's purpose and what we were sent here to do, and not fall into traps of chaos and disunity, for that does not serve us. We must be better than that. Here I wanted to show how the path of the Sufi and the Mason is one and the same. On the left hand side you have the Holy Kaaba which is in the holy city of Mecca in the east and here we see the Kaaba the perfect ashlar stone which was constructed by Prophet Abraham peace be upon him and how God had given him the tools to construct this this house of God which even in the Bible is described as the valley of Bacca in the book of Psalms and inside you have the perfect ashlar stone which every Muslim and Sufi exemplifies himself to be and how inside of it you have the three pillars and an altar just like how you have the Masonic tracing board and see the same described on there and the aspect of the Jacob's ladder and to climb up from this state, fallen state and to reach that state of divinity that we all carry within our hearts so these teachings have existed in the Near East before a long time ago. It has existed for a very long time. We must be able to learn from it. And, you know, historical records will tell you Islam was founded in the 6th century, but like I said, this faith has existed since the time of ancient Egypt as the Ka and the Ba, the Kaaba, are the aspects of the soul from ancient Egypt which one must hone within your own self. That's, that's the uh, quest that you must be on. And even when you go to Mecca, you see the brethren of the white cloth, just like how you have the innocence of the lambskin of a master mason who sees the brother of the white cloth. And there, they all wear the white cloth, and they all meet on the level, no matter what your race, no matter what your uh, background, it's all about becoming the perfect ashlar stone and becoming one with God. So the aspect of the Sufi, the Muslim, the Templar, we're all one and the same. And we must realize that. On the right hand side, on the upper side, you have the Sufi crescent heart with the wings on it. And that's you becoming ascended. Becoming ascended within your own heart. To find that aspect of God. To know thyself is to know thy God. And all of these faiths teach you is that you have to look within your heart. And you have too many people out here that are causing division. And anything that causes division is ungodly. You'll have one person with a table with pamphlets telling you that everything that I'm teaching is correct. And the other person is condemned to hell. And you go to the other table. They're teaching you the same exact things. And they're saying the other person is condemned to hell. So we're not here to condemn each other or cause any kind of chaos or ungodliness. That's the agents of chaos, and the agents of chaos exist in all races, religions, and creeds. It's not about a superior race or religion. It's about whether you're righteousness or you're on the side of darkness. You have to pick one side. That's the only difference that we have. 
there's no difference of race, religion, or whatever else that you follow. There's no difference of that. It's about either you're right or you're wrong. It's simple as that. You can't be going to church every Sunday or praying five times a day and on the same day going to your business and scheming and cheating people. You are being watched. And even the Mason knows that, that the all-seeing eye of the Creator, the all-observer, the all-knower, will hold me accountable one day if my life comes to an end. So don't waste your time thinking that you're invincible. Any day could be your last. I might have a million dollars in my bank account, big house, big car, nice, all that is good. But what guarantee is that going to give me that I'm going to wake up the next morning? So we come with nothing, we leave with nothing, except our heart and the actions we carry and the love we carry for each other. And I remember having a dream where I was in the celestial grand lodge of what, what we know as heaven. And you go up there, and I saw the square and the compass, the Masonic symbol that had wings on it, and it was flying around me, just like how I see the Sufi crescent heart with the wings flying around to become ascended with the Creator. So Almighty God has given me the privilege to see that in the dream realm. And on the bottom, you have the Islamic prayer rug, which is the oblong square, which is the lodge room, Noah's Ark, anything that consisted of holy with the blessings of God was with the oblong square shape. And as you see on the uh, architecture of these, the prayer rug, you have the two pillars that are in the holy city of Mecca behind the Kaaba so you have the two pillars the perfect ashlar stone which in itself has an altar and pillars you have the archway on the bottom with the two pillars so it's all about finding that oneness with each other and to know the oneness that we all share with each other and I hope you were able to take something from this lesson just like how I have in my own journey as well Thank you all for watching. I hope I was able to answer the question of uh, those that were curious if a Christian could join a Sufi order or if a Sufi Muslim could become a Knights Templar, whether in Freemasonry or in other ways of participation that Templar groups exist in. And you realize that we're all one and the same. I hope I was able to answer that curiosity for you and to realize that realization. So thank you. So if any questions or comments, please email me at salmonshake911 at gmail.com. All images used were retrieved from public domain searches and are the rightful property of their respective owners. The images used in this video are for the purpose of nonprofit awareness and education, which is protected by the copyright laws of fair use, education purpose. All my videos are for nonprofit and education purposes. All rights reserved. Thank you.